Hello everyone, I'm Chester44, I'll send you this fly, and welcome to this let's play of Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. Last episode, we looked, we uh, spoke with the uh, Royal Deadfire Company in charge of the Brass Citadel, where they basically said, hey, there's something going on over here, take care of it for us. And I guess we'll probably have to, we'll be taking a look at it later. Then we made our way upwards to the Sacred Stair, where all the temples are. And currently, we're in the Temple of Gone. So, let's see if we have anything that Here's we can do. Here's where I do the rituals. Right there, under the Statue sure of Gone. Why not? Alright. Dream Journal. The writing on this tattered scrap of paper looks like it was penned by someone still half asleep. Have you ever had a dream so real that you... you wanted... That you wanted Aethys so badly that you could do anything? A line is drawn through the writing below with it, its author has scrawled, No more cheese before bed. Wurtan. I can't believe it. Is that really you? Solid meals and decent sleep have filled Wurtan's lean frame out somewhat, but the man retains a fox-like aspect around the face. He greets you with an indecisive smile, unsure of whether to be nervous or pleased. And a dare. You made it out of Gilded Vale for good, then. I'm glad. A lot more might have made it out if you hadn't left him for dead. Adair's fists clench and unclench several times. Oh, is he the guy we found un underneath Gilded Vale in, uh, in that tomb? I haven't forgotten. It's why I'm here, Adair. Been seeing lots of old faces lately. Here that comes with the job. You being a watcher, I mean. Wurton grins sheepishly, then ducks his head. I've been helping out here with the Dawn Stars, handing out food mostly, or delivering supplies. Not. not so different from Gilded Vale, maybe. Took some getting used to working shoulder to shoulder with Raid Sarens, but it's not so hard as you'd think. Feels like I'm on the right path, toward a little piece of redemption, maybe. I guess everyone's chasing after Aethys these days. You too, eh? Don't know what you have to be sorry for. Would be nice to get some answers, maybe. Or... Forgiveness. For getting his people killed. I don't know. Well, good luck. Doing my best, lady. Worden smiles and inclines his head in a bow. Hungry? Come on up. Don't be shy. Ah, uh, I think I'm fine, thank you. Now then, Leave it to me. rubbing the back of her neck self-consciously, Jody casts her gaze to the side. <sighs> Nothing like a homecoming to make a girl remember her roots, even if they are dried up and half dead. She n sighs, nudging a bit of mud from her boots before she lifts her face to settle on you with her big, dark brown eyes. Hmm? Sometimes I wonder if my brethren don't think I got black acre running in my veins. Uh, let's see. Thank you. People often fear what they don't understand. Suppose they do. Suppose sometimes people do bad things in the name of their gods. But my brethren do more good than bad. And more good than most. Huh. It's interesting seeing uh, Adair go back and forth with anti aethasians and then pro aethasians I'm gonna need to take a look at him again. We came here to cleanse your soul. Uh, speaking of gone... Yeah? She cans her head to the side. Lay it on me. Why are you gathering souls in your lantern? I was born to reap souls and lead them to the light. Now with Aethys dead, and these dire visions, I think I need to shield them from a hell gone dark. But the more I gather, the more my mind turns to tatters. Hmm. The beyond hasn't gone dark. It's well lit with living Audra. Not yet, no. But soon. Subconsciously, she clutches tighter the hilt of her sickle. Gone has shown me the common end. Excellent. What if you didn't collect souls anymore? <sighs> that ain't gonna happen. Grinding her teeth, she shoots you an incredulous expression. You'd ask me to turn my back on my god? Remind me again the difference between Gone and Aethys. Aethys is dead. And Gone is the death before life. He's the ripeness before the fall. She raises her sickle, turning the blade to catch the light of her lantern as if in demonstration. But we know Aethys isn't dead. That 
Count Lumber and Hunka Audra might claim to be Aethys, but that doesn't matter a whit. He died, so we can't be Aethys anymore. Death changes every soul, even a god's. And if it doesn't, it should. The Dawn Stars are all about goodness and light. Why are you so concerned with death and darkness? Why do you think the god of rebirth held an aspect of death within him? You can't have life without dying. There ain't no beginning without a prior ending. Ain't no day without night, no spring without fall. Mm. You can't grow crops if you never harvest for seeds. She does have her points, and it makes sense. Well, we came here to cleanse your soul. All right. Yeah, I'm ready. I've done this before, but never with such a full lantern. You may want to stand back. The uh, experience can be somewhat intense. I imagine more so for a watcher. Kneeling before the statue of Gon, Jody set her lantern between her knees. Head bowed, she presses both palms to the copper cage. A low chant lilts from her lips. As it grows louder, the light from her lantern grows brighter, as does the lantern that the statue of Gon holds in one skeletal hand. The two lights pulse in rhythm with the chant, resonating with each other, twin heartbeats that pound faster and stronger until the light from Gon's lantern bursts outward in a shower of violet-hued rays. The essence bathes Jodi's bent form, making her jolt upright as a cry escapes her. <sighs> Don't know if I feel cleaner, but I feel... something. Blessed, for sure. Jody offers you a half-smile as she retrieves her lantern, trembling fingers curling against the gleaming metal cage. Let's just hope it lasts, because my lantern feels as heavy as ever, full to brimming with essence, like dark water spilling over my mind. Well, let's be off. All right, I'll be right behind you. All right, things good there. Gone has been depicted with a warm smile, but the eyes beneath his hood hold an unsettling fervor. Dwarf Star's Blessing. Yes. Nice. Do you yeah. have anything to say, by the way? Adrift in a waking dream, Jody sways on her feet, sweating, muscles quivering. She whimpers low in her throat. Jostle her out of it. Jody groans, slow to rouse. At first, she hunches in on herself, but then the tension eases from her muscles and she stands straighter. Confused, her eyes study your face. Reckon that's the first time I ever bore witness to my own demise. It was... not pretty. She worries her bottom lip with her teeth. Never woke with such a driving need for reaping before. It's making my hands shake. Didn't the cleansing work? It did for a while, but then it wore off. All this essence I've gathered. It soaked the blessing right up. Left me with hardly none. You're losing your light to the darkness. Rekindle it by helping the living. She sucks in a deep breath. You sound like my high priestess, Samhain. She never shuts up about the living, when she ought to worry more about the dead. Seems the more souls I gather, the better I see Gon's will. And the less I get a wink of sleep. Your nightmares are getting worse? Night or day, sleep or waking. It's getting harder to tell what's real from what's just yet to come. There is something I'm meant to do, though. Once I gather enough souls, us Gaunites, we're supposed to shepherd lost souls, not just gather them. The harvesting's only the first part. If I were to dump the souls, it might make me dream less, like before. Or, darn it, who knows? Maybe it'd just make it all worse. Either way, I've got to find my purpose. She turns her face away, bottom lip trembling. Slowly, her fingers reach for the hem of your shirt. She rubs the pads of her fingers over it, holding it to you in the lightest of touches. Will you help me, Watcher? Yes. I was hoping you might would. Sometimes I feel like, with you by my side, I can stand against gods. Oh, even Seraphin liked that one. We'll find an Audra vein and release your burden. It's the best way to ensure the souls reach the, reach the beyond. It'll need to be a potent source to overpower the draw of my lantern. It's gotta be luminous for sure. She nods, clearly devising a plan of action. That's one problem solved. But what about the itty bitty issue regarding the god of rebirth not actually being in hell? The souls will make it safely. But who's to see to their proper reseeding? This is a huge risk of Aora's balance. 
You really trust Maugrin not to rebirth Aethasians as warriors of the flame? Think Gawain won't be greedy? Gone aside, the gods' past actions don't instill me with the greatest confidence. And what else would you propose, hmm? There's not much else here. Normally, I'd simply safe keep them until the god of rebirth could return to hell. But you're right. I ought to deliver as many souls to hell as I can before it's too late. Hey, okay. We need to empty my lantern right away. Gods, but you're clever. This is why Gon directed me into your path. I just know it. She nods once before turning away. Well, we have our plan. So you're saying you're oh. literally a pirate of the mind? You sail in and steal people's thoughts? Behold, lass. I'm the original psychic piratical. <laughs> Not hardly. Even I've heard about Malnage. She's a cipher like you, ain't she? Only older. Ugh, had to dredge up my cruel rival. You should know her arsehole itches when mention being made of her. <laughs> what a nasty hex. Tell me you weren't the one that put it on her. <laughs> Darn, I hope that doesn't make her itch. <gasps> Hell, or that. Now I'm just making it worse. <laughs> I best shut my mouth before I cause more damage. Oh, Jody. <laughs> I like your style, kid. Oh, Jody. <laughs> so innocent. Okay, I do kind of want to take a look at the reputations a bit. I am... Um... Ooh, the Principe don't like me very much right now. Not promising. Good things in the gullet. Children of the Dawn Stars very much likely. And Port Maj likes me a fair bit. The Valians are kind of either way. Uh, Laniara and Ser Seraphin, he likes me a fair bit. Aloth, we're neutral. Jody, we're also neutral. And Adair, we're also neutral, interestingly. Huh. I guess I can see some of these. Uh. And those other things. How about the other people? So, Adair is getting along fairly well with Jody, and a little bit with Aloth. Jody is surprisingly neutral with everyone. Aloth gets along well with Jody, doesn't like Seraphin very much. And Seraphin kind of likes Jody. Okay, it's nice to see some of that. I'll need to see if I can figure out a way to get in better with the Principe. Eventually, I suppose. I think, yeah, these are the five main groups. We've got the Hawana in general, Nekataka, the Principe, the Royal Dead Fire Company, and the Valians. Oh boy, that'll be a bit to deal with. Anyway, who are you, Nordigand? Oh, hold on, I'll loot that. Who are you, Nordigand? Just get in line, dear. Ain't no trick to it. Hey, there's a lady I'm looking for. Came from Deerwood. Adair waves a hand in the old woman's face, as though expecting cataracts she does not appear to have. Short, got a bad temper. It goes by Alava Mazzy. Heard of her? I know an Alava, but that ain't a surname. No? Adair's jaw shifts sideways to gnaw on his pipe stem. Not real warm, that one. Stop by unannounced, you get a pistol up your nose when she answers the door. Sounds like she's expecting you, Adair. Yeah, that's a, that, that's her. So she's living with her uh, husband, Ben. Not that I noticed. Adair exhales a surprising amount of air. Huh. Must be laying low. Just that boy of hers. Oh. Adair's body goes perfectly still. It seems to waver in the breeze. She's got a son. Uh, how old would you say? Like a, a little boy? Groaning, Jody pulls her hair forward over her face as if she can hide from the moment. I'd be happy to help you with the math. Oh, this is getting good. Oh, I couldn't say. It's been years. He must be a young man by now. Wow, that's, uh, that's something. Well, thanks for your help. Don't you want to know where to find her? Yeah, I was just about to ask. Indeed. She's in her song, though, last I heard. Got a little plot of land out there. I guess we'll look that way then. Much obliged. Do you want to talk, hmm? Adair? <laughs> hey, look who it is. No, nothing to say. I think 
Okay, that's a little awkward. He liked her. Had a little uh, tryst with her. And uh, then separated. And now he finds out he probably has a son. Oh dear. <laughs> this is gonna get awkward, isn't it? No problem. Though weathered in age, this tree is dotted with buds and nascent branches, indicating new growth. Frau Nils. Sure. Offerings of fruit, bread, and even wine have been set here for the temple. Frau Nils. Plus three. So you've got accuracy with melee attacks, and we receive bonus health. Eh. All right. High Priestess Sewin. What do you have? As you approach, a wood elf straightens over an altar to Gon. Her robes mark her as a high priestess. She arches and cracks her back loudly, a satisfied grin spreading across her face soon after. Jody, I do hope you are not getting into trouble now. Who, me? <laughs> no, I wouldn't dream of it. She smiles at the sight of a stranger. You're the high priestess of this temple? Do swine stink like shit? She hits you with a toothy smile, eyes glittering with amusement. I'm guessing you're not here to worship. Then what can I do for you? You must be getting a lot of people in, the, in here these days. Oh, yes. People are afraid. Angry. Change can be frightening. But what did any of us come here for, if not a new beginning? Doesn't this place get a little, uh, damp? No more than anywhere else. No sense fighting it. The water sustains our faith, surely as it does these trees. And your devotees have gone. What about Aethys' other manifestations? Gone's the only one that matters. Jody, easy. Sewin shuts her eyes, exhales sharply, and then opens them again to regard you with a patient smile. The Shining God's got many faces. But they're all his to wear. Divine King Widewin, he saw the dawn stars, telling him of things to come. But it's gone with Sickle and Lantern that's come to the Deadfire. Our gods returned, and he's gonna bring balance to the world. He's gonna right all the wrongs we have suffered. Oh boy. Gone will bring a new beginning for all of us when that hour comes. Well, on other topics, Pitley said you may be able to help with the food shortage in the gullet. You did good, helping Pitley with the infected. Anyone half so capable's got my ear. But I won't make you an empty promise. She dips her head, considering. We tried. Shipped some shares for charity. God, it's nearly two years back. Had the means to do some real good. But the guards wouldn't have it. Sent it all to the palace to be shared out, proper-like. Never did see it again. What if I could ensure it would reach the Roparu? Of course. We'd be glad to lend a hand. But how you see our shares reach the Roparu this time? What makes you think it'll work now when it didn't then? I'll work to gain an audience with the Queen and petition her to allow your charity. All right. You wind up in the good graces of the Kahanga Royals, you get them to see the light, and I'll get you our food. Well, there we go. And that is all good. And that seems... That was spooky. That seems to be everything in the Temple of Gone. So, let's see what else we have in this area. That, I believe... Oh! I've been saying there's nothing more important to me than us freeing you from Barith's bonds. Well, I meant that. I did. Adair's breath lingers in his chest and his mouth hangs ajar, throwing a statement into immediate doubt. But there's this other thing I need to see about. On the way, like. I was gonna tell you. Start talking. This woman, I, uh... Well, love's not the right word. But she was something to me once, back in Gilded Vale. After the legacy ended, all I could think about was how to repair what the gods had done. To me, that meant seeing about making Aethasians feel safe in their own homes. That's how I found the night market. After a while of that, I got to thinking about the days just after the war, when we all stopped feeling safe in the first place. Mostly, I thought of the woman I couldn't help, who had to leave her home in the dead of night carrying a little baby that had no soul. Last I saw her, she was going to New Hayamar, 
Been looking for her there, only to find that she left a long time ago. Anyway, I don't expect you to understand. But I gotta know she ended up all right. Sounds like she ended up with a son. Yeah, that's... that's something. Coming out of Deerwood during that time. I mentioned the baby she had when I knew her. That was a boy, too. I never found out what happened to him. But with the Hollowborn, you didn't have to ask. Yeah, I imagine. Yes, he got a brother, though. Hedare falls quiet, blinking several times before noting your continued presence. You're sure you want to know where this leads? No, but I don't see a way to let this go. Least a ways not now. Last time I saw a lava, we got friendly. Now she's got a son. Well, let's get moving. And we'll definitely see if we can help out there. Okay, I wish I could see the world map, but that's gonna be another time. The scent of beeswax and incense wafts from these barrels and crates. And I'd like to imagine that we actually had that conversation as we were walking up these stairs. That makes sense. Hello there. Shining God, light your path, stranger. Can I interest you in any of our wares? We g g gathered what we could. Much of our coin goes towards feeding those in need over at the temple. Sure, I'll have a look. Thank you. Necklace of fireballs, boots of speed, and a whole load of food and the like. Well, is there anything I have that I can sell? I can sell this hunting bow. I can sell this clothing. I can sell this hat. I don't think there's really anything else. At least nothing I want to sell. Uh, I guess the dream journal doesn't matter. We got all of these ingredients, and I'll hold on to those for now. So, there we go. That'll do. Thank you very much. Alright. Let's uncover this, which will allow us to... That'll let us get to Serpent's Crown, but we're not going there right now. Yeah, there's not really anything over here, I don't believe. Let's take a look down this way a bit. Payment for heads. It could be no simpler, I see. You're a bounty hunter, aren't you? An armored Juana turns and looks you up and down. She holds this motionless pose across a long and contemplative silence. Finally, she draws out a single pyre and balances the coin on her knuckles. Tell me, are you someone who walks the path that coin lays out before you? She arches her fingers in a wave, causing the coin to flip from one knuckle to the next. She seems enraptured by the motion. Uh, what? Transmuting actions into payment is the alchemy that orders our world. All things turn on the axis of a coin bond. She touches her brow with her free hand as she says the word. Her coin continues its winding journey uninterrupted. I pay bounties so that death can bring order to life. Would you help me continue the cycle? Try and steal her coin, maybe. You snatch up the coin before it can vanish into Okaru's fist. Or you thought you did. Closer inspection reveals your hand is empty. Okaru smiles and holds your gaze. The next time payment crosses our hands, let it be in the execution of a bond. A vow. A bounty. Holding the coin in two fingers, she lays it flat in your palm and leaves it there. And what bounties do you have available? If you would forge a coin bond, I know of people on these islands who must die. Their fate is already decided. The coin wishes only to collect. Dugra the ascetic is wanted for crimes against his monastic order. His people have made a coin bond for his death. She holds a pyre and lovingly inspects its edge, running her index finger along the curve. The Orlin wanders the wilderness on the island of Crooksburg, northwest of Nakataka. Before I go, I had some questions. Speak freely, I say. I'm still hunting the for Dwargus. The bond is patient. It knows that you are committed to your course. I will be here when you are ready. Do you have any other hobbies? I am a paladin of the Gold Pact Order. Ah. Since taking my oath, I have never been absent of work and duty for longer than an afternoon. She stands rigid and raises a fist over her heart, but something in her manner softens. I also enjoy knitting on occasion. Ha! <laughs> okay, fair enough. It's something to pass the time. Supplies! Get your supplies here! Sure, hello. Consider, friend. The blessings of the priests are priceless, but so too is good sense. 
I have supplies here, so that daring travelers may live to honor the gods. Well, let me see what you have. Exceptional stiletto, the magnificent escape cape. Don't need that. Uh, load of traps. I don't need any of this. I appreciate the offer. I don't need it. Tiabo, who are you? Hello, watcher. Fancy a look at this talk? Straight from the laboratory. Well, let's see what you got. The amazing and truly incredible instant potion belt. Okay, then. And Okura's kettle. Animancy cat. 10,000! You gain bonuses to arcana and metaphysics, and all creatures in your party summons gain bonus might and penetration. For 10,000! I know I said I was going to get every pet animal you can get, but... Come on, no! That is not worth it in the slightest! Okay, we can go down these stairs. End up back over here. Leave it to me. This Razor Gill, okay. So you defeated this ship devouring beast all by yourself? I'm telling you, you just have to aim for the eyes. Do you now? It does seem to be a lower area, but my guess is we're going to need to gather something in order to get in there. The winds whip violently along the cliffs below, carrying the sound of rustling trees within. Oh. This tree, its roots digging deep into rock and bricks, hangs over the ledge of the precipice. Below, an open tomb clings to the sheer walls of the cliff. Peer over the precipice. The precipice drops hundreds of feet into the lower districts of Nekataka. Strong winds assail the cliffs, whistling as they crash against its rocks. A few yards below, the ledge of an open tomb rests on them. I don't think we need to go in there. It's probably another way into whatever this is. A massive door looms before you. The edges are sealed so tight not a breath of air escapes them. Religious runes sprawl the length, carved deeply into pitted stone. Inspect the door. Definitely you. An elaborate etching spans the stone's width, carved faintly beneath several runes. It depicts a small crowd praying to a pair of giant eels that have coiled above a large door. An Amawa priest holds a disc near the door's face. A religious artifact, blessed by Barath, is likely necessary to open this entryway. And that is a temple of Barath right there. Which I, I think... Dare you to go inside. No! Tangaloa will eat me! Tangaloa. Okay, that must be the name of Barath. Alright, let me take a look, see if there's anything up this path. And then... I believe... Yeah, there doesn't appear to be. The one at the Trial in Defiance Bay. Yes, I am that one. Diveros. You think she's here to convince the Queen we're evil? <laughs> no, I'm not here for that. Alright. Well, with that, I am going to go ahead and end this episode here. Next episode, we're going to step into the Temple of Bereth and see what we can find out about what's going on in there. Till then, I am Chester44, I'll say in is Falai. That is Laniara, Adair, Joti, Aloth, and Seraphin. This has been a Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. And I shall see you all next time.